Hello audience, the work continues on the truck. This time we're going to start working on the cab. As I've mentioned before, when I got this truck, it was pretty much just a chassis, and I decided to make a cab for it, which is what you see on it now. This is pretty much my own original design that I just made up as I went along. I tried to make it look somewhat like an authentic aftermarket truck cab from the time. I also tried to keep it as cheap and the effort as little as possible. Which you may not notice from the outside, but when I start showing you the structure inside of it, you'll see what I mean. It's been working pretty well for several years now and it's still holding together pretty well. But I did make a few big mistakes and we're going to start correcting them now. The cowl panel and the windshield frame are 1917-22 ish open car which I used because I had that stuff laying around and I thought it'd be really clever. The panels on the side, obviously I curved them to match. The back of the body is just a box, pretty much. Which I did on purpose because they're easier to make that way. The doors, like the rest of the cab, are just flat. As you can see, it's just a wood frame with steel over it. Now what makes it easy to make is, as you can see, if the panel's flat, I can just take a piece of wood, cut it to length, and assemble it, and that's it. And then just take a piece of sheet metal, just bend the edges over, nail it on, and that's it. I did put some detail in it because the factory cowl panel has this bead here. I kind of continued the bead all the way to the back and then went around across the bottom. Give it some style and make it look like it was kind of machine made. Looking inside, you can start to see just how low budget this was. Any steel in this is pretty much whatever scrap metal I could get for cheap or free. The sills as you can see inside. These are half of reproduction Model A open car sills that I had left over from a project. And the front of them is just random parts welded together. The cross members, again, is just scrap metal that I got cheap. Same thing with the back. The rest of it is framed in wood. The seed riser, which I made myself, I added these beads in it to look more machine made. And everything is pretty much just flat steel nailed to wood. The biggest problem it has is I just made it too short. I made it this length because I thought it looked good, it looked proportionate to the chassis, which it does, but there's just not enough room for the seats. Now I left it this way because I couldn't really figure out how to extend it without completely rebuilding it or adding an obvious extension somewhere and making it look bad. What I decided to do is the back panel, instead of being straight up and down, I'm going to have it lean back like a touring car. And then instead of this being flat, I'm going to make a piece that rolls around here. And it shouldn't be too difficult. So we'll get started. Alright, this is kind of what I had in mind. I don't know if this is enough or needs more or less. I'll worry about that later. The next step is to mock up the seat 
to figure out the measurements that we want to go with. Now before we do that, as you noticed, I removed the steering column because it was the wrong length. Now to figure out the right seating arrangement, first we need to make sure the steering wheel is in the right place. So this is the steering column that was in it. As you can see, it's been modified quite a bit. It's about two and a half inches shorter than it should be. I did find a better one, as you can see here, or most of one, and I can make a good one out of it, but it needs a little too much work for right now. So for the time being, I'm going to borrow the steering column out of my touring car, because it's good to go. And here's the new design. Now, when I put this together originally, I didn't make much of a science of where the seats go, which was a mistake. Now the bottom cushion, before, front to back, it was just level, and I had it as low as it would go without touching the fuel tank. And because it was level, the back of it was up pretty high, which made me sit really high, and I had no leg support on the front of it. So, I redesigned it. This is now to the dimensions of the 22 to 25-ish bodies, the ones that use the oval fuel tank. The front, I added a half-inch thick piece of wood. The brace that was on the back of it, this was holding the back of the seat. I lowered it, I think an inch or so. And then these steel parts in between, I just made them. So it has a lot more angle to it than it used to, which makes me sit lower, and it has more leg support. And then the back panel. I moved it back only about four inches, but it made a huge difference. Now I had just a piece of wood going across here originally, and this had an upright piece that went here. And I made a new brace to go around it, like I did with the touring car. It's just steel tube welded together. Also made new uprights. And it works pretty good. It's really solid and it's a lot more comfortable than it used to be. And here's how it looks with the seat cushions installed. Even though we only moved the seat around a little bit, it's a massive improvement. It's a lot more comfortable to sit in. Also, even with both feet on the pedals, I can fit my knees under the steering wheel with no problem. I'm sitting a little lower than I was. Before, my eye level was about the top of the windshield. Now it's about the center of the upper frame, which is about where it should be. The steering wheel is about in the right place. I can reach it fairly easily. I don't have to reach up very high or very far. And if it's too far away, I can always move the backrest a little further forward. Well, the seats may need a little adjusting here and there. I'm going to try it the way they are for now, but even as is, it's a huge improvement on what it was. The only thing left to do is finish the outside of the body. I made a new filler panel for the right side. Now I'm going to make one for the left.
and that's finished. Now I decided to attach it with screws because if I welded it, I'd have to remove the paint. I'd probably heat warp this panel, and then I'd have to dress it off. So this was a lot easier. It doesn't look quite as stylish. It looks a little more industrial. But then again, it's a truck, so I can get away with that. Next thing to repair is these top brackets. Now I homemade these, and they just bolt onto here. And they were fine when they were new, but after some time the top has put a lot of stress on it and it's loosened up this whole section here. So it's bending down. Now on original Ford bodies from this time, like this is a top bracket from one of them, it's got this leg on the bottom of it that goes into the body. And at the time when I put this cab together I didn't know why they did this. I thought this was just an additional brace. But apparently the reason is it keeps them from falling down. So I'm going to take this off, weld a piece on this that goes down, and that should fix it. Now that's a lot stronger than it was. That should work just fine. It's several days later, and as you may have noticed, the cab has been repainted. I was able to get that done surprisingly just after I got it finished. And I'm currently working on reassembling it. There's still a lot that needs to be done on this truck. I don't know what I'm going to do on it next, if anything, but I did make a lot of progress on it. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.